Is it working? Oh man, I look shiny as hell. Hey, do something about that, man. I know, I, I know, I know I'm supposed to shine, but not like this. Is. What is going on, everyone? Jorge here. Welcome back to my channel. Now, I know it's been a little while since my last upload, but bear in mind I've been working on some other great content for you guys in addition to my music production stuff, getting back into photography, and also trying to get back out of the house, because let's be honest, last few months I've been kind of a hermit and it feels weird. I'm accustomed to it, but it feels weird. Now, many of y'all have wondered, how did I get into the entertainment industry? How long have I been involved in it? What are some of the perks and the turnoffs of being in that industry? Who have I met? What are some of the odd jobs and gigs that I've done so far? And the simple answer is, there is no simple answer because everything kind of came in turn. Kind of like a domino effect, you know? One thing led into another and honestly a lot of it wasn't planned. Mostly because I never expected I'd ever be in this industry to begin with I mean you know those of y'all who know me since like high school know that I wasn't the type of outgoing person that would put myself out there like that but of course as you guys know people change over time and I know I certainly did so I will do my best to answer these related questions as best as I can so this is going to be a multi-part video so this is the first part of this video so I'm going to start with how did I get into the industry if I track it back a bit I believe it was 2009 summer 2009 when I kind of had my first brush with the industry so at that time I just moved back from BC a few months earlier uh, I spent a year of my undergraduate uh, degree there uh, I did not finish, so that's a story for another time. So I came back home and I decided that since I was going to pursue communications and PR in school rather than what I originally went to school for, hint hint it was music, but didn't work out that well, so yeah. I decided that since I wanted to work on my writing in preparation for what I was going to pursue, that I was going to need a viable way to do it. So I decided to start a blog. None of this, you know. Well, this is what I did today, you know, I brushed my teeth, you know, I went here, I went there, I went to sleep at this time. And I realized this is like an over-exaggeration of how blogs are actually run. But at that time, I knew that I didn't want to stick to the norm. I knew that I wanted to be a little bit more out there with my content. And so I decided, how cool would it be to just sit down with one of your favorite celebrities, albeit in person, over email, Skype, whatever and have a serious like a real conversation with them about what it is they do why they do what they do do they love what they do that kind of thing it could be rappers actors singers producers dance choreographers you name it in any case i decided to start my own entertainment blog my very first interviewee for those of you og rhythm connection fans that have been following me since back in the day uh i'll link the blog here those of you who've been following me since back in the day know this name, but my very first interviewee was J-pop singer Miria Kato. So Miria was very gracious enough to let me interview her at the time. Uh, and that really was the start of everything that kind of has led up to this point in my career. A lot of you are probably wondering, kind of in relation to the blog, how did I get these interviews? Simple truth is, you gotta reach out on social media, man. I can't tell you how many times I've hated having to go through artist management just because it takes so long to hear back and a lot of the time if they're not prompt and or if they are they'll say no you know the artist is busy or he's going on tour or whatever right um, so a lot of the time what I did if I was lucky I'd find the artist's social media profile online it could be the public one the personal one i'm not encouraging this by the way but this is how i kind of started out i hit up media on her personal facebook ages ago and she graciously accepted the interview we did the entire interview in english because for many of you that don't know she speaks near fluent english so i thought that was pretty cool and so 
that kind of started the trend of networking for me in that you know I used social media heavily back in the day to build my connections around the world in terms of connecting with producers, connecting with artists, con yeah, connecting with artists, hopefuls, actors, choreographers, you name it. Lo and behold, Rhythm Connection blew up into something that was beyond my greatest dreams. I mean, in the last almost eight years that I've been running the blog, I've interviewed names like Far East Movement, Bai Ling, Brian Ju of Fly to the Sky, Tarfield, Group One Crew, Ellen Kim, I literally have lost track after all this time. There's been so many people that I've had a huge pleasure in sit sitting down and talking to, whether it be in person, over email, over social media, some over Skype. Uh, you know, it, man. So I actually did a couple of posts on that blog of mine about memorable interviews that stood out to me that I've done over the years. And, you know, it's been a fantastic experience for me because it not only allowed me to work on my writing and do something that I thought was very different at the time, but also it allowed me to build networks into an industry that I didn't think I could build that easily. And it also kind of showed me more possibilities about stuff that I could consider pursuing. So with that being said, in 2010, I decided to pick up music production. Now. Music production is very much an art in itself, you know. It's very much the same as learning how to play a guitar or learning how to play the piano or play the violin. Except that in this case, you have a little bit more freedom to do what you want with the music you create. It really is up to you in terms of how much drive and passion you have to pursue learning how to properly produce to actually save the money to buy the gear because you know a producer honestly a producer is only as good as his gear I'm telling you that much right now however I do know of producers that have used some very low tech ways to create their sounds and have done fantastic so you know what as long as you have the drive and passion to really get into producing you know the sky's the limit the sky's the limit so in terms of what my motivation was for getting to producing it kind of was a secondary effect from my decision to stop pursuing music in school um, a lot of the time I felt that while I was trying to kind of accustom, like, or I guess get accustomed to performing in front of people, just playing a guitar and singing, I got the jitters every single time. Throughout my whole undergrad, I played coffee houses every now and then, and I'd always get the jitters. You'd hear it in my voice, you'd see my legs shaking, you literally could see my facial expression saying, like, get me the hell off this stage. But that being said, I wanted some way to pursue music without having to deal with those feelings and so I felt that music production was my way to still have a creative outlet and create music but without being in front of people so I saved up money and I bought myself a USB MIDI keyboard and a MPD trigger pad from the same company that creates the MPC uh, console trigger consoles like the same ones that like Jay Dilla use and I've basically been working from there. I started out with GarageBand after I bought my MacBook and I moved on to Logic Pro 9, Logic Pro 10 when it came out. And it's been a it's been a crazy ride for me so far. You know, I I haven't released a lot of music and I'm very much a perfectionist in that regards. And I know there are somebody that are gonna be like, when's your mixtape, when's your beat tape dropping? When are you dropping new music? And I will address that in another video very soon. But you know, I didn't want to let my circumstances at the time stop me from creating music and so I decided to get into production, try to learn as much about it as I could, try to network with more people and it's led me to very interesting places so far. For those of you that don't know, I have a song out in Korea that came out almost a year ago with former lip service member Bipa called Kumnai Kajima, Tuna Kajima which means don't go in Korean. Uh, I produced a song for her and the reception was generally very positive, albeit it was a very under the radar release because it was done through SoundCloud and YouTube. Anyways, why the hell am I plugging this in right now? <laughs> um, so I've been doing music production for about mm, 
eight years now, wait, seven years. Uh, I've been in the music industry almost nine years now, so um, it's been it's been an interesting ride to see how quickly things change in terms of trends in the industry. You know, seeing what kind of stuff is popular now compared to when I got in. Also, just the kind of other stuff that got affected as a result of my blog and my desire to get into music production. Um, I started covering events where my blog as a member of the press back in 2014, which allowed me to meet more people, network around. It also allowed me to score my short-lived um, volunteer position with a uh, K-pop event company based in Seoul. I'm not going to name names because, well, that's not important. Uh, some of you know who I'm talking about, but I also got around a little bit in the K-pop convention circuit, uh, acting as a panelist and moderator, and it has been a very interesting ride. I will elaborate a little bit more in separate videos about each of those things and kind of the, how they led up to my experience thus far. Uh, but yeah, so it's, I haven't been in the industry super long. And I feel like I've been done a lot, but at the same time, I've accomplished a lot more than I ever dreamed I would. And I'm very grateful for that. And, you know, uh, God willing, I hope I might still be able to do some more stuff with that, you know, while I have the time, you know, because, you know, your boy has a lot more to say and a lot more to do. So keep that in mind. That is a promise. I will be putting out all the stops this is it for part one i hope i didn't leave it too vague but i'm gonna go into a little bit more detail about every single piece that kind of fits into my experience thus far please like share subscribe comment below uh if you have any similar experiences you want to share leave a comment below if you think there's anything i can improve with my direction of my video my visuals and everything please let me know because like i said i'm still adjusting to doing this and i will catch you all on the flip side peace